Welcome to today's webinar. It is my great pleasure to host Dr. Sabina Ceruto Ribeiro, who is Associate Professor at the Federal University of Acre in Brazil. She will talk about measuring biomass and carbon stocks in forests of southwestern Amazonia. And she will give a presentation that will be followed by a question answer period. And the plan is to wrap up the official part at 8 a.m. Pacific time where I met. Um, however, Sabina agreed to stick around a little while longer to, um, to answer remaining questions and for networking. So before I hand over the floor um, to Sabina, I would first like to acknowledge that I'm hosting this webinar from my UBC office that is located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam First Nation. The land UBC is situated on has always been a place of learning for the Musqueam, who for millennia have passed on their culture, history, and traditions from one generation to the next in this site. Second, I would like to remind you that the webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the IRFA webpage. Third, I would like um, to acknowledge that this webinar is part of the 2023 Forest Menstruation and Modeling chats, which are organized by you for research group 401, forest menstruation and modeling. Uh, if you do have any speaker suggestions, um, please email me at bianca.eskelson at uvc.ca. And as this is an IUFRA event, I would like to highlight IUFRA's mission to advance research excellence and knowledge sharing and to foster development and of science-based solutions to forest-related challenges for the benefit of forest and, and people worldwide. The webinar series is being organized in, in the spirit of knowledge sharing and to allow for some interaction and networking across the globe. And so now that I've covered the IRFA requirements, please help me welcome um, Sabina. And you can now, I will stop sharing my screen and you can share your screen and start your presentation. Okay. Can you see the slides? Yes. Yeah, okay. So thank you very much, Bianca, for the invitation to be here. I am very happy to be with you. And today I will talk a little about uh, the measurement of biomass and carbon stocks in forests of Southwestern Amazonia. So what we have been doing here and how we are trying to disseminate our results to traditional communities in the Acre. So let's see if I can, okay. So um, biomass, we, uh, we all know we can define as the mass of living organisms by unit of area. Uh, the way biomass is formed is part of the carbon cycle. So we, we can take a look here in this a small part that's related with photosynthesis. So all vegetables, all plants can do this. And in this process of photosynthesis, they will get the CO2 from the atmosphere, produce some glucoses, use it in to, 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 to be alive. And then the remaining we'll use to produce uh, some biomass and to, to leave oxygen to the atmosphere. Uh, we commonly have been using biomass to express the production of an ecosystem. Um, Usually to do it to trade issues, we prefer volume, but biomass sometimes will be more interesting because captures better the amount of wood in a location because we don't need to be focused only in the steam or branches. We can also add some uh, small pieces of no commercial value and um, address some other three compartments like leaves, branches, and roots. And the relation about biomass and carbon stock has been studied more frequently, more recently due to climate change and the extreme events. So more recently, people are interested in knowing what is the carbon stock 
of a, a forest. And for that, we usually do this biomass quantification because based on this forest biomass, we can estimate the carbon stock because the vegetation has around 50% of its biomass composed by carbon. And if we know the carbon stock of uh, a forest, we can um, estimate the, the amount of carbon that would be released if the, I don't know what's happening here, if the forest is deforested or if the, okay, no, it's there, or is burned. Um, it's also uh, very important to know this carbon stock because for example, the, the Paris Agreement that's a, a world agreement to, to keep the earth temperature below 1.5 degrees Celsius. And it, it has several key points and to, to achieve the, those goals, we need a, a lot of information, including the forest carbon stocks. Uh, considering Okay. Considering Brazil, um, every country that signed the Paris Agreement uh, sent a, a nationally determined contribution, and Brazil did it also. And it has a, a, a very interesting commitment because uh, the country said it will it would reduce the greenhouse gases emissions to 43% until 2030. So we are almost there. We also need to improve the use of sustainable biofuels. We need to, to achieve the zero illegal deforestation by 2030 in the, in the Amazon region. And we also should restore and reforest 12 million hectares until 2030 and enhancing the native forest management and that so. So considering this Brazilian NDC, we see that the Amazon region has a very important role. So here we have where the Amazon region is, is located. And we know the, the Amazon region is very important because it, it supports the, most of the biodiversity of tropical forests in the world. We have almost 10% of all known species. So it's important that we keep Amazon there. But what's happening is that this is not being followed. For some reason, society does not care so much about the keeping the forest standing, to keep the forest ecosystem service being providing. And we see that then the, the, the path that we are having is that we are having deforestation and forest degradation. So um, now I will focus in this southwestern region of the, the Amazon. Because when we talk about Amazon, sometimes we think that it's, the, it's like a homogeneous forest, but it's not. Depending on the region, we will have special features. And I will focus myself now in the southwestern part of the Amazon region. So here is where am I now? I am in the state of Acre, in the capital of the state, that is Rio Branco. And we are in an interesting point because we are in a triple frontier with Brazil, Peru, and Bolivia. And besides of this, we, we here we have some interesting features in the region because in the southwestern part of Amazonia, we have the second largest bamboo reservoir of the world. So bamboo 
makes the forest dynamics in the region completely different from the other parts of the Amazonia because bamboo grows very fast and uh, difficult this forest regenerate, regeneration and sometimes makes the trees to, to, to broke. And it, it, when we have bamboo, we have like a, a big problem, especially if we want to, to do forest management activities in those forests. Besides of this, the region has been the epicenter of severe droughts. For example, the severe droughts that happened in 2005, 2010, the Southwestern Amazonia was the center, including other droughts that we can see in this figure below. So we, we have um, our forests being very affected uh, by these extreme events, by natural reasons like bamboo, and also due to anthropic activities like deforestation and degradation, especially for cattle raising. So in this context, we have been trying to, to perform this carbon stock uh, determination to, to know better the potential of our forest to, to stop carbon because uh, most of the studies developed in Brazil has been done in central Amazonia, for example, in regions like Manaus and, uh, and Belém. And we cannot use the estimates that we have in this region in southwestern Amazonia because we have a completely different situation. So to perform this carbon stock determination, we have some steps that sometimes we will go through all of them, sometimes just to some of them. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. Um, and to quantify this carbon stock, usually we will go to two paths, two, two possible paths. One would be the destructive sampling. Uh, that means that we would cut trees and, and weight these trees uh, in, in the field. The, the problem is that we would, this takes a lot of time, it's a lot of work and also demands a lot of people working together. And because of this huge work, we will probably select the small plots that, and sometimes we will generate some bias in the estimates because of that. So, here I will present some of the work that have been developing uh, in the region. And one also was in, in Manaus, but it will exemplify the, the kind of work that we need to do uh, in the field. So if we want to use this direct method and we need one, and we really want to cut trees and wait, it will be like that. So we will have big trees, we will have to, to harvest and to cut them in pieces that are possible to, to carry and then we will need to wait. It's a lot, a lot of work. If we want to send this below ground biomass to get the below ground carbon stock, we will also have a huge work to, to sample trees. We will need to weight them so it's also not easy. Uh, if you want to be very rigorous, we will also catch this sawdust when we are cutting the, the skin in small pieces. And we also need to, to get each tree and separate it and weight it. And so you can imagine uh, the work would be, it's a lot. But imagine that you're not able to do all of this work because you don't have so much money. So you have another way to, to go using this direct method that would be, for example, determining the, the, volume, the volume using this standard section method. You can get samples of wood disks 
in the field. But even in that case, you have a lot of work in the lab to identify the material, uh, to follow this, this wood density determination in the, in the lab and to, to dry the material. And then you are, if you want to, to get the carbon contents in the laboratory, you will need to cut the material in very small pieces, seize it, and then take this material to a, a carbon uh, device that will give you the, the carbon contents in, in wood, in uh, leaves, in roots, in it in every three compartments that you decide to, to sample. So many times this is not the case. We, we cannot afford to all of this. And then uh, in the end of such a huge work, obviously we will finish with the generation of allometric e equations, uh, most to, to estimate biomass and carbon stock to to avoid other people to have to perform all of this work. By the other hand, we have the indirect methods. In this case, we will use some mathematical equations that relate the biomass to some uh, three variables, uh, usually uh, this diameter at breast height, total height, and wood density. And to you apply this uh, biomass equations, we will have to, to have a sound sampling uh, to, to, to avoid getting so much bias. Uh, anyway, we will, we will have the generation of some error, especially if we consider that in the natural forest, it's very common to have hollow trees, especially in the older trees. And in the case of the very large trees, that's the case, um, the equation was not developed for such larger trees. So maybe we'll have some kind of error associated with their estimates. We also developed, developed some work um, like that. For example, there was a study that we did in uh, an extractive reserve call it Chico Mendes, is a very important destructive reserve in Brazil. It is, it is in Acre. And as we could not harvest trees because in, it's a extractive reserve, we sampled some trees using an increment border. So we get these small pieces of wood we had to determine the, the volume, then we needed to dry, to, to transform in powder, and then we use it, uh, we take to the lab to determine the carbon content. And to, to get the carbon stock, we first use it an allometric equation, the case, uh, a very famous one that, that is from Xavi and other authors. And then with this biomass estimated, like that and using the carbon contents that we obtained in the laboratory, we had an estimate of the biomass and the carbon stock in the, in the area. And we also obtained some uh, estimates of uh, wood basic density. The, in literature, we don't have uh, the wood basic density for a lot of tropical species, so it's important to, to have this information. And we usually don't have this estimation of carbon content in laboratories, so it was uh, important considering the, the lack of information in this field. Um, and we can also use as an indirect me uh, method the remote sensing in which we will combine this uh, ground measurement with uh, data provided in the past uh, by satellites and more recently um, using like 
sensors that are active or, or they are passive and including drones that are more, are more, more common nowadays. Well, we, we generated all this information in the university with researchers. It's nice. But um, more important than that would be to disseminate this information to communities. Why? Because we are having this um, global warming, these extreme events. And in, in the end, most of times, who will decide if the forest will be kept in standing or not are the people that live inside forests. However, many times they don't have access to knowledge. And even if they have, sometimes they cannot understand because it's very abstract for them when we talk about carbon stock, when we talk about extreme events, sometimes they cannot understand. We, we have to think that many of them cannot even read. So thinking about that, we have been developing some work to try to disseminate this, this knowledge and now we will show one of them. So this project um, was developed here at HESEX uh, Chico Mendes. And we did this capacity building with traditional communities inside it. So how we did it? One of the objectives of this, this work was to improve the capacity of the stakeholders, in the case of this community, to use the scientific knowledge for sustainable forest management of their areas. Because the, the project has another um, branch that was to, to generate this knowledge. We worked with permanent plots and, and get the carbon stock from these plots and everything else. So, so how we perform it? First, we selected, selected some people to, to, that would, be the, would have the capacity of being capacity multipliers. We worked with participatory workshops. Um, it was in total eight workshops in which we, we attempted to, to teach them the forest health monitoring. So we, we explained our project. We did it, how to do this field orientation. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, some basic concepts. We worked with the rainfall protocol for floods establishment and remeasurement. We, we teach them how to establish a plot. And with the data that they collected in the field, we uh, also teach them some data analysis using like uh, electronic uh, spreadsheets. And then we helped them to multiply the knowledge they had acquired. So we helped them to organize some dissemination um, workshops. Uh, and we had two dissemination workshops. So the, the, the people, the young leaders that we trained, they organized the workshop and they uh, transferred to other community members the, the knowledge they had acquired during the project. So this was the, the, the idea. And some of the, these guys that we worked with now are um, leading some of the communities. So they, they really became uh, leaders inside their the extractive reserve. Other interesting features about our experience can be found in this paper. So we, we detail a little more. And this project, we, we also um, expanded it to go to schools because the community members, they pointed that we should work also with children 
because children and youth, uh, they were taught by their parents to, to harvest forests because they say, oh, we cannot get money with standing forests, so we, we should take it all, take it out. So we did this, this project um, inside schools uh, in the whole state of Acre. We developed a rural um, a learning kit that we distributed in the, some rural schools in, in the state. So here is the kit. Each school received a bag with this equipment that would be necessary to perform the dynamics that we created by this project. All the dynamics are inside this, this book. And then we trained some supervisors, pedagogical coordinators, and teachers from rural schools on how to apply the dynamics, how to use this learning kit. We also did some training inside rural schools. So we, we did an um, inside training. This is an example using, for example, here, one of the games that we created. And here are one of the, the dynamics that they had to, to collect some seeds and leaves. So the, the teachers pre perform the dynamics, they learn it, and then they would apply this with their students. The next steps. So we this project already finished, but the idea of the, this, in doing this, um, getting this scientific knowledge and taking to, to communities did not end. We, we, are we are developing new projects and currently we have these two other one projects in which we plan to keep in generating scientific knowledge and also disseminating this knowledge to traditional communities in the state of Acre. So <laughs> thank you very much for the, the opportunity and I will be here available for questions. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you, Sabina. Um, I will just to make an announcement for the upcoming webinars, I will share my screen real quick if that works. Yes. My computer is incredibly slow. Let's see what's happening. Okay. Thank you so much for the presentation. And before we move on to the question and answering portion of the webinar, I would like to draw your attention to the upcoming webinar in March when Dr. Sonja Vospernik from Boku University in Vienna will present on tree species growth response to climate and oak pine mixtures across Europe. Uh, the webinar schedule for April is still being finalized, but in May, Dr. Francisco Mauro and Dr. Bryce Frank will talk about small area estimation forest inventories. And uh, then in October, I will host Dr. Stella Britt from Aqua from Ghana, who will talk about assessment of deforestation and forest degradation. I'm still looking for speakers for September and June. So if you do have any suggestions, uh, please email those to me. The announcements for the upcoming events uh, will be uh, sent out via the Division 4 mailing list, uh, which you can subscribe to. And they will also be posted in the IUFR uh, calendar uh, shortly, probably in the next few days. And then um, thank you for your attention. And